Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,352. This week on Cars Yeah, I'm celebrating the 69th annual Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance that takes place on Sunday, August 18th at the Lodge in Pebble Beach, California. I'm proud to say that Cars Yeah is a sponsor of this wonderful event. To learn more, go to pebblebeachconcord.net. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and the interior, is with a car cover. I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right, 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft has been manufacturing premium quality exterior and interior covers for over 50 years with a stellar reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit over 80,000 patterns and growing. They are the only cover I'll put on my vehicles. You can choose from a wide variety of fabrics, styles, colors, and more. From full cover designs for factory to custom-made vehicles, plus convertible top covers, trucks, truck cab coolers, motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, trailers, campers, personal watercraft, and a wide variety of custom features. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest, calling in from beautiful Reno, Nevada, Jackie Frady. Hey, Jackie, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready. All right. Jackie Frady is the president and executive director at the National Automobile Museum, the Hera Collection, located in Reno, Nevada. Her career in the collector car field began in 1981 with the former Harris Automobile Collection. Following a progression of management positions, she was promoted to executive director and later elected president. During her tenure, the museum was named one of the top 10 auto museums in the nation many times over. Since 1995, Jackie has been an honorary judge at the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, one of a few women to serve in this role. She is a 2015 Top Businesswoman of America Businesswomen's Association. She's helped author and edit two books published by the museum. Against All Odds, and a souvenir book about the museum's history. She also helped produce a short film, The Bill Harris Story, and The Legendary Journey to the Museum. So Jackie, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment, share a little bit more about your career and an obvious passion you have getting to hang around a lot of very cool automobiles? Well, I always say about my job, how lucky am I? I actually get paid to do this. It's a true passion. But I've just been very (laughs) fortunate to have this long-term career with the National Automobile Museum that is filled with cars that were formerly owned by Bill Harris. So it's an exceptional collection and it's a wonderful experience for people to come through the museum, but they're really walking through history. And it's just kind of a journey over a century of, of cars and, and special things that happened in our country. And our museums won a lot of awards and recognition, particularly for our education programs. So it's just a, a terrific opportunity and I feel very blessed. Well, you uh, are one of those fortunate people in the world that have figured out the secret sauce to life. Do something you love, figure out a way to get paid for it. And while it is a job, it doesn't always feel like it. You get to have a lot of fun. And when Sandra Button and Candace Hawkinson at Pebble Beach said, oh, you've got to have Jackie on your show. She's been involved with Pebble Beach here for a long, long time. I got very excited to get to talk to you and share your story and share the museum with people that listen to my show that have not attended your museum. So here we go. As we continue on your journey, I always like to start with a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars. Yeah, so Jackie, take the wheel. It's a quote from C.S. Lewis, and it's guided every aspect of my life, but particularly my career. And it's, integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. (laughs) Boy, isn't that true? (laughs) How have you incorporated that concept into the many activities that you're involved in, because uh, obviously you're out in the forefront, you're in charge of this museum, you're out there all the time, but you're also behind the scenes because you've got a great staff of people running you. So maybe you can give us a, a, 
a situation or a story about how you integrate that into your life and what you do. I love that saying. It's great. Well, I think often we're faced with dilemmas. People may ask you to do something that eh, maybe has a little bit of a gray area. And I think with museums, that often happens where someone is uh, perhaps buying something from the museum at a significant dollar amount and they say, you know, I I need that written off as a a tax write-off, as a a charitable contribution. And you have to just say, oh, gosh, you know, you need the money, you need the gift, whatever it is, but you have to step back and Unfortunately, that, that's just not going to work for us. So it happens in some of the more complex things. But, you know, when it gets down to making serious decisions, sometimes you just have to step back, pause, and and think about that quote and, and go forward. I remember my mom was saying, it's really easy to know what to do, when to do the right thing, Mark. Just think if your grandmother was standing here, would you still do it? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, if you... If you believe in heaven or any of that, you figure these people that uh, were in your lives are looking down with pride and you don't want to disappoint them. So uh, I think that's true, but it it is true. Yeah. Behave the way uh, as though everyone is watching you and then you never have to worry about anything uh, because you know you've done the right. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Grandma's watching. That's one way to put a little bit of fear to kid. That's for sure. Would you share a story with me that instigated this really deep passion you have for cars? Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were a car gal? Yes, absolutely. But first, you know, I grew up in Southern California car culture, so I had had an appreciation for cars and they impacted our lives when we were young. But the pivotal moment was a a one-week temporary assignment that led to a 38-year career in the collector automobile field. I was working at Harris Hotels and Casinos and in finance and administration, and I'd only been there a few weeks, and was asked to go to Harris Automobile Collection. And I was assured that I'll only be there for a week, and I definitely won't like it there, but <laughs> they need help with a significant project. Well, I was very fortunate that it was September of 1981, and the project was a press conference announcing that a nonprofit organization had been formed. Our governor had helped form this organization to save a portion of Harris Automobile Collection. After um, Bill Harris died, his collection and corporation were put up for sale, and a new company had come in and purchased it, announced they were going to be selling the collection through auction, and we knew from our community that it needed to be saved. And the president of the company said, you know, when you attend the press conference, don't leave until you have a chance to talk with me. That was on Thursday, and the question was, would you like to stay on with the project? So, yes. Wow. I stayed on with it and <laughs> called Harris personnel department and said, you know, I really did like this week here and I'm and I'm yeah. transferring to to this department. And what a remarkable journey it's been. Well, been it's a- incredible to me. I mean, for somebody who grew up in Southern California car culture, loved cars, had this little window of opportunity. You know, I always say there's no luck in life. It's when preparation and opportunity collide into each other. And that sounds like that's exactly what happened to you. That's right. And often we forget to say yes when those opportunities come forward. And sometimes uh, you have to take yeah. the risk. And right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when that collection was being sold off and everybody in the car community was freaking out like, no, you can't do that. And, you know, looking at it later, having seen the picture, well, the company that bought everything, they, what are we going to do with cars? I mean, that was Bill Harris' passion. I, we don't, we need to liquidate, get cash so we can make something of the rest, the real business that we bought here. And everybody was like, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. I'm like, well, you know, when you buy something, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. So I'm so happy that this whole thing was formed and this was created so that part of that collection could stay together because, boy, a collection it was. I mean, when you were first over there, had you been to the collection before to look at the cars? Or was that your first time of even seeing the cars? I had been there on vacation. And, oh, oh, row after row of magnificent cars. There are about 1,400 that Mr. Hare owned, and <laughs> yeah. a large portion on, on public display. I was familiar with it, but you're right. The public outcry was immense. It wasn't just in our community. It wasn't just in Nevada. It was across the country. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember it for sure. Yeah. I remember going there when I was a kid, seeing that collection, and just in awe. I think it was the first real collection I'd ever seen. We were up there skiing in Lake Tahoe area, and my dad knew I liked cars. And, you know, I just thought, wow, this is this is pretty impressive. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down, Jackie, and talk about a big challenge or even a failure that you faced along the way. And I'd like for you to share this mainly because I want to share with people who might be facing a similar situation to learn that you can learn something positive out of these things and you can move forward in a positive way. So walk us through something that 
you encountered and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum in your business, in your career, in your life. Well, the big challenge was when I was offered the position of executive director. That was in 1992. It started with the collection in 81, progressed through positions and had the position of assistant director. And then the board came to me and said, you know, we're making change and we'd like you to take this position. Well, that wasn't an easy yes. The, at that point, the museum had outstanding $10 million of construction debt. And it was also losing money annually, and and it really wasn't in good order. It was quite a challenge for this nonprofit organization to accept. Holiday Inns, the purchasers of the Hera Corporation, gave them six months to identify a site for a new museum to get financing. And if that was accomplished, then the gift of the cars would come forward. Six months? Six months. That's it. Oh, my gosh. Oh. With the city of Reno, you know, we looked at 17 different sites, and the city picked this this site for us uh, on the, along the Truckee River, and that property was donated. wasn't time for a major fundraising campaign, so we got a bank loan and uh, opened the museum, and here we are with, with that situation. So when I was asked to become director, I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, everything has gone forward to try to save this collection. You know, what if it doesn't work? What if I'm the one at the helm You're you know, the when, it, when it goes oh. under? So I oh, flew to Kansas City and and uh, talked to my brother. He was a executive uh, VP of a Fortune 500 company. And I said, I just need to talk about this. I need some advice. So I kind of walked through the challenge that we were faced. And when I got done, you know, he just asked me this absolutely profound question. He said, can it get any worse? <laughs> <So> <laughs> I said, oh, great. Yeah. I, I flew to Kansas City, and that's the one question you asked me. And I said, well, you, yeah. I said, no, it can't get any worse. And he said, then it's an opportunity. So I picked up the phone, called the board, and said, yes, I accept the position. Well, it was absolutely grueling, and it wasn't until at least 10 years later that we resolved the $10 million debt. And, but within a year of being director, you know, we turned the operation around. And what a great journey. I mean, you know, it's wow. been challenging and, and rewarding. And uh, Your brother. Again, sometimes you have to say yes <laughs> and ask yes. the profound question. <laughs> and ask the right question. Yeah, may not get the answer you want to hear, but uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. I'll have to remember that. That's a good one. I, I'm, I'm faced with some tough times. Uh, can it get any worse? And sometimes, yeah, it can. You don't know what's coming, but most of the time it's like, no, oh, this is it. I'm at the bottom, so I got to start working out. Only one way to go. That's, that's awesome. Exactly Great right. story. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, let's have some fun. I'd love for you to talk about maybe a car that was special in your life, a first vehicle that you got that had great meaning for you, and maybe share a memory you have about that ride. Well, I'm going to tell you about two. My first car, when I was 16, you know, I got this brand new Pontiac Firebird, and that was that was so cool. And uh, but as I said, I appreciate cars at that time. But the car that really made a difference was during that one-week temporary assignment at Harris Automobile Collection when I'm kind of assessing what is this all about. And I went on a trip down to downtown Reno in a 1910 Palmer Singer. And I just thought, this is just such an amazing car. And it really represents what this whole project is about, trying to save part of this collection. You know, and I went to the restoration shops there, and there were all these craftsmen that were, you know, pounding metal and shaping wood and stitching leather. And I I thought, this is just remarkable. So that 1910 Palmer Singer kind of summed up that whole project ahead and was really important in my life. That's a beautiful car. And uh, it's, I'm not sure what, what it is about that car that stands out for me, but it just, considering its age, to me, it looks newer than what it is. When I think about the shapes of that car, beautiful old car. And to get to go for a ride in one, I mean, even cooler. Um, and Singer, now the Palmer Singer, tell us a little bit of what you know about that brand, because a lot of people go Palmer Singer, what's that Singer sewing machine guy or something? Or <laughs> What right. is that? So, Well, they were manufactured between 1908 and 1914 in Long Island, New York, and it was between Henry Palmer and Charles Singer, and Singer was with the sewing machine company. Yep, yeah, yeah. So they were just a short term of manufacture, but, you know, some pretty impressive cars. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful cars. Is there a vehicle that has been in part of your life that you've let go that you wish you had never let go? Well, I think if I were to answer that question, I would think about all the many cars at Harris Automobile Collection that went up for auction (laughs) in 1984, 85, and 86. Oh, gosh, that list is too long. There would be quite a few of them. 
that uh, yeah. we would want in this museum, Bugatti Royale, you know, some uh-huh. Duesenberg, some remarkable classics that probably uh, should be here. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I would love for you to talk with our listeners here about the museum. Tell me what has you excited about the museum, what uh, gets you fired up to go in every day, and for people that have not had the honor of being there, what they might expect to see when they go and visit the National Automobile Museum, the Herod Collection. Often, I think people envision going to a car museum, that it's going to be this huge room or warehouse with cars parked side by side. And we certainly broke that model. We're one of the first to do that when we opened the museum. And it's it's an experience. It's not just about cars. There are four galleries filled with this magnificent collection, but they're connected by period street scenes. You're walking down the turn of the century or maybe the 30s, the 50s, and then into a more modern era. A beautiful theater where you can see this short film about Mr. Hare, a little history about the car. Audio tours where you can have great stories and kind of weave the history along with the progression of the automobile there's a, we have a partnership with the Nevada Space Center, and we decided that transportation isn't just grounded, but we can go into space, and perhaps that's the next uh, direction that our automobiles will be taking. So it's it's an adventure. It's a walk through time, a walk through a century. Uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. And the website is automuseum.org. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll make sure I put a link to that. Check it out. If you can't get there this week or next week or next month, uh, go there, uh, pour yourself a nice glass of something to enjoy and partake in the website. It's wonderful, a nice trip, and then that'll get you fired up for the time you can go visit this spectacular museum because it's well worth putting on a bucket list of museums to visit. Tell me a little bit about what it means to you to be an honorary judge at Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, and what are you looking forward to at this year's event, which is just a week and a half away? First, it's a tremendous honor. When I was asked to serve as a, in that capacity 24 years ago, I was really struck by the invitation, nervous about the invitation as well, because, of course, you're charged with picking, you know, the most elegant car in very specific categories. And then eventually, you know, move, I've moved forward to a lead judge and casting a vote for best of show. So it, the responsibility is taken very seriously from that standpoint. But what a remarkable job to be able to go and look at particular cars and marvel over their design and their beauty, their elegance, and be able to honor one of them with a nod towards a, a very special trophy. Yeah, so no doubt. I can't really imagine incredible. the pressure. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. I've had many, many friends who've had cars on the lawn, and the pressure once you're there is just so immense. I mean, the fact that you even got there is a win, in my opinion. But, of course, everybody wants to win their class, and, of course, there's very few that could even expect to win Best of Show. But, wow, I mean, you just you you sit and watch the judges, and I have friends that are judges. In fact, the first woman to be a guest here on Cars, yeah, was Diane Brandon, who's one of the judges in the Rolls-Royce class. And I remember she said to me, after being on the show, I was there, and she said, "Um, I'm sure I'll see you in the lawn, but if I'm judging, don't even look at me. (laughs) Don't even talk to me. (laughs) <laughs> because we take it very, very seriously. And it's very difficult while you're sitting there judging and talking to somebody when someone comes up and says, Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. you know, so, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. But I'm very, this is really serious here. I mean, it's it's a major, major, major deal. So I look forward to seeing you uh, on the lawn there. And I promise uh, if you're busy working, I'll just put my head down and walk by. <laughs> I won't bother you. We'll get plenty of time to talk at the end of the day. Very nice. Well, Jackie, up next is the last lap before we put the pedal to the metal. Let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. When you want proven performance, there's one brand that's been around since 1938. That's Edelbrock, building the finest American-made performance products for the street and track. Edelbrock's products are designed and dyno-proven to deliver maximum results. Edelbrock has thousands of made-in-the-USA performance products for all makes and models. From their new AVS2 carburetor and innovative ProFlow 4 EFI for your muscle car or truck. To superchargers for your daily driver and more, visit edelbrock.com to check out the latest products for your ride and when you're ready to check out enter cars yeah in the coupon code and get 10 percent off your order that's edelbrock automotive performance since 1938 you take care of your cars 
But who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified. And he's a car guy, too. Learn more at chrisvkimball.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars yeah website at carsyeah.com. Okay, Jackie, we are back and I have a bit of an introspective question for you. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car parked in your museum or in your garage, what would Jackie be and why? Well, I'd be the 1907 Thomas Flyer. That's really? the car. Yes, yes. And, and, that was a that's a tough question because there are so many cars, but I think what it represents perseverance, you know a healthy winning spirit, mm-hmm. the long journey, enjoying the journey, making a difference, a mark yeah. in history i I think that would be it I like it very nice answer, yeah, very unique answer too, uh especially for that car. I can say nobody else has ever selected that car. I've gotten some very interesting answers to that question, some of them are just really crazy, but uh, that one I like a lot and the reason behind it even more so. Well, we're entering the last lap and I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Oh, preventative maintenance. Make sure you do it. (laughs) You know, let me me ask you this because this is a, a question a lot of times people ask about museums. All these cars sitting here, do they ever move? Now, the cars in your museum are they ever exercised? Oh, my goodness, yes. Majority of the okay. collection is in running condition. We take, go to a lot of shows, participate in parades. They rotate into our automotive shop. Yes. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So important. I think the worst thing for a car is for it to sit. I know cars that uh, I purchase from people that are very low mileage, and I, oh, I've got a gym. Then I have to spend a whole lot of money getting them roadworthy because they've sat way too long. Uh, not good for these things. They need to move. My next door neighbor's a pilot, and he said a plane's no good unless it's in the air. So, uh, yeah, same with cars. Got to be on the road. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over all these years? Oh, planning. I'm a planner. There's the annual mm-hmm. plan, then it gets monthly, weekly, daily. Business plan for the business and a business plan for my life as well. Oh, there you go. I like <laughs> it. How about a resource? Is there a resource you'd like to share with our listeners that you find particularly excellent? Well, I'm thinking for listeners who might enjoy visiting auto museums across the country, perhaps going to the website for the National Association of Automobile Museums. And on there, you can access a list of all the auto museums across the country. So I think that oh, might be really? a great okay. resource. I didn't, I'm not even aware of that. So I, that's a great one. I'll, uh, I'll make sure I put a, a post of that or a link to that on Jackie's show notes page on the Cars Yeah website. And of course, another great resource www.automuseum.org. Go there, as I mentioned earlier, and check it out for this museum. How about if I could wave my magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that be? Oh, that'd be Bill Hara. I would Uh, love to talk to him about his car collecting and what drove that passion and the remarkable cars that he selected. But I'd also want to see what he thought about where we are today. How different would that be when he was collecting masses of cars for a very different person that purpose than a nonprofit museum? It'd be great to see, get his insight to that. Yeah, I think so. An incredible person. How about a book? Is there a book you'd like to share with us? Now, I mentioned earlier there's a, a couple books that you were a significant part of, Against All Odds. Maybe you could talk about what that was all about. And obviously, the souvenir book 
of the museum's history. I always like to buy souvenir books of museums when I'm when I'm there. So when I get home, I can sit down and go through it again and kind of digest some things that I probably missed while I was at the museum because I was so busy looking at all the cool stuff. But is there are there a couple other books or maybe just one book you'd like to share with us? From a business standpoint, it would be the book Raving Fans by Ken Blanchard. And it's about it's a it's a great little story about customer service and gives very interesting examples that you wouldn't expect. But the, the theory is that satisfied customers just aren't good enough that you want to create raving fans. So I think that's a very important book as far as reading. I'm a passionate reader of mystery novels, and uh, Louise Penny has some great books, good mystery series with good philosophy. Makes you stop and think. Yeah, yeah. I believe my wife read some of that. She loves reading books like that. So. That sounds pretty good. Raving Brands, I'll have to read that. There was another great book by Carl Sewell, uh, Customers for Life, that talks about uh, uh, getting customers and keeping them for life, keeping them happy. And he was a big car dealer. I think he was in Texas, maybe, but uh, very successful. And all the techniques that he did to keep people coming back to buying new cars, coming in for service and so forth. But Raving Brands, I'll get my hands on that. It's, it's, mind- raving, it's raving fans. Raving oh, fans. fans. Fans, oh, fans! Yes. I'm sorry. Thought it was you want to brands. Your okay. To be raving fans, and it was actually there you go. recommended to me by Barry McGuire, and I think we all oh, know he's cool. a master of customer service. There you go. Absolutely, <laughs> been a, a great friend of mine for decades, and a, and a guest here on the Cars Yeah website. Well, I will remind you that you can find this book, Raving Fans, with an F. If my ears are working well today, uh, <laughs> I'd be doing a lot better. Raving Fans uh, that Jackie's recommended on the Cars Yeah website. Just go to the resources page. I have a tab there called Guest Recommended Books, where all the books recommended by my guests are listed there with quick, easy clicks to buy. There's well over a thousand books there now. Fantastic library you can build yourself. Designed by car people and enthusiasts. All right, Jackie, we're up to the checkered flag here. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet. Even if it belongs in your museum, I'm going to get my hands on it, park it in your garage, because I've got the magic wand today. But there are a couple deals to this gift I'm going to give you. One is you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. You have to drive it. No garage queens allowed around here. And it's the only collector car you can have in your garage. That one might make it a little difficult. So what can I give you today? I'm going to ask for a Packard Woody. And I I want that just because of the experience that it evokes. And I want to take mm-hmm. it on tour to all the national parks and visit the Great Lodges. <laughs> And I want to enjoy the ride. And most importantly, I want to slow down because I rarely do that. You know, that's a nice answer. Now, Packard Woody, now, I've seen some Packard Woodies, and they're absolutely spectacular when compared to most concepts of what Woodies are for people. I mean, they're elegant vehicles in in a way. Is there a particular year? It might be the 48. Anyone will do? (laughs) Year is not as important as as the Packard, just the Packard Woody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Nice choice. And even more so, I like the reasoning behind it. Wouldn't that be fantastic? You think of some of those beautiful wagons that beautiful resorts in the national parks used back in the 40s and 50s that would, you know, carry people from the resort to the airport, perhaps, or wherever they they came into. So uh, I think that's a great choice. I'm going to do a little research and see what I can find for you. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> well, Jackie, you've taken me on a beautiful ride today. I knew it would be fun. I've really enjoyed getting to know you better. I'm really looking forward to meeting you on the lawn at Pebble Beach. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us a little parting piece of your wisdom and guidance before you drive off into the sunset into a beautiful national park in that Packard Woody? <laughs> yes, I would. The advice I would have is treat everyone like your most valued customer. Yeah, everyone, even the person that might be serving you a meal at a restaurant or behind the counter at an espresso bar or whatever. You know, it's absolutely amazing when you take a moment and say something nice to somebody uh, because so many people are ignored. You stand there in line sometimes getting a coffee and the person in front of you is on the phone, not even listening to the person ringing them up or looking at them for that matter. And it's amazing when you look somebody in the eye and treat them special, uh, the kind of response you get, uh, the smiles. And uh, you really do make people's day that way, too. Great advice. What's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and the museum? And that's to go to our website at automuseum.org. There you go. We'll be sure to join Jackie and I on the lawn at this year's 69th Annual Pebble Beach Concord Elegance that takes place on Sunday, August 18th at the Lodge in Pebble Beach. We're going to have a great time. I hope that we see you there. If we do, tap us on the shoulder and say hello. To learn more, go to pebblebeachconcord.net. 
Jackie, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your experiences with the Cars Yow listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Thank you, Mark. It was just great visiting with you today. This was fun. Thank you. Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah TV show? It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah podcast guests, and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah TV is available on MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find MAV TV on Direct TV. Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!